I think we've waited long enough. Nixies, return to my side. Thank you, little one. You did well. Oh, the poor thing. Its essence has been irrevocably warped. I must reseal the void gate. That was a sharp lesson in the dangers of void gates. And what of our experiment? I'd say the results speak for themselves. The unprotected Nixie has suffered extensive etheric corruption. As Nidana observed, it's well on its way to becoming a Void Scent. The one merged with the Talisman, however, appears unaffected. I sense no changes to its equilibrium. Rest now, little ones. Graha's theory was correct, then. So it would seem. But while our second Feminia was untouched by void energies, the talisman itself shows signs of degradation. It was, of course, originally designed to shield the soul from primal tempering. It stands to reason that etheric corruption of a different sort would affect it differently. We may need to modify the warding scale's design to account for the 13th's uniquely unstable ether. You've said much of the Void's instability, but my imagination fails me. What manner of place is this broken world? Ah, my apologies. I forget that not all of us spend our days sequestered in dusty archives. The 13th is a reflection of the source that was drowned in a flood of darkness. In Emmett Selk's own words, this tragedy was a result of the Asians' attempts to force a rejoining. They erred in their haste, and made of that world a useless void. You remember Una Kalhai, the unusual child we met during our troubles with the Warring Triad. He explained the fate of the Thirteenth thus. The champions of that ill-fated world used the stone known as Aurasite to contain the power of primals. But those self-same heroes were gradually corrupted by the Aurasite's bleeding energies, transforming into fiends 
with an endless hunger for ether. By the time anyone thought to oppose them, Light's strength had grown too feeble, and the balance of the 13th tipped into eternal darkness. It was Elidibus, as I recall, who rescued Unakalhai's spirit from his final battlefield. But I wonder if there were others whom the emissary saved from oblivion. The server? Ciela, wasn't it? And you say she was another of Elidibus's pawns? I see. So Ciela, or rather Silver, was beguiled by the same dreams of heroism as Unicalhai. And what of your own experience? Will you tell us of what you observed during Noah's expedition? I can picture it now. The sunless, Stygian expanse, infested with legions of ether-starved monstrosities. A void in every sense of the word. What you have described in such lurid detail is exactly why I hesitate to encourage you. Worry not, Great Vritra. Our journey into the 13th is but the first leg of a longer voyage. A voyage that shall lead us to other reflections, to new mysteries and discoveries. And I mean to be there every step of the way. But first I must focus on refining the warding talisman. Then I can begin work on constructing an artificial Atomos. Or I could, if I had the relevant manuals to hand. Might I be so bold as to request access to the Sartrap's family archives? <clears throat> Your Excellency? Hmm? Oh, yes. That can be arranged. I will speak to my officials upon our return. We will see you back in the city then. <laughs> 